trying to find the source of this horrible interference on the low end of the AM dial here. Quiet. Light switch, no. I unplugged the washing machine, but that's that's off right now. That's not it. That's not it. I'm at the other side of the house. I haven't found the source yet. I'm beginning to wonder if that's coming from outside. It's all over the place. I'm upstairs now, and I'm still picking it up. Found it. I think that bulb has a uh, capacitor dropper. It's an LED bulb. I wonder why that uh, would be causing any noise. I went and turned on a bunch of other LED bulbs around in the house, and nothing. It's clear now. Legacy advisor. Advisor. It's just background. So this one bulb, this little two and a half watt LED bulb, was just splattering the AM band, the lower part at least, with noise. And I was picking it up even over here. These wires must have been acting as an antenna. And I'm pretty sure this is a capacitive dropper in these bulbs. These I had in my collection, not in use. This is the only one I had in use. It's been going for at least 10 years. So yeah, that's interesting. It uses a capacitive dropper type circuit, so I'm surprised that's putting all kinds of noise all over the radio band like that. Okay, so I tore the bulb down, reverse engineered the simple circuit. And uh, it's kind of obvious what the problem is to me. So what's going on here, we have a capacitor reactive type uh, current limiter here. So they put 2.82 microfarad caps in parallel in a discharge resistor. It goes through the four-way bridge and then back out the neutral. So what's going on here is this capacitor is supplying the power to these LEDs. Only when the voltage coming in goes above the voltage on the capacitor will this capacitor get charged. So what's happening is a sudden shot of current is going into this capacitor and it's fairly transparent to these LEDs because it's a fast changing signal relative to the normal 60 hertz sine wave. So at the peak of the sine wave we're getting that big blast of current, high crest factor on the positive and negative peaks as this capacitor gets charged. You see, the thing is, there is no resistor. Normally they have a resistor. And I checked this fuse. This is not a fusible resistor. You know, there's no resistance here. It's just, you know, a regular fuse when I check it with the meter and it says 1A on it, which I assume is 1 amp. So that high peaking, rapidly changing pulse, you know, the uh, rate of change over time is very quick with that pulse and it's putting harmonics into the AM band. So that's why it's making that noise. 
but at least that's my theory and I'm going to put that to the test here. Okay, to test my theory, I have another one of these bulbs. It's the same model, it's noisy. I have the radio turned on. It's set in another part of the house several feet away. I have a 47 ohm resistor in series with the power supply. So I'll power up the lamp with the resistor and without. So first I'll do without. You can hear the radio in the other room is picking up the noise that the lamp's producing. So now with the resistor, look at that, dead quiet, without, with. So yep, that's the problem. It's that crest factor. I'm going to see if I can look at that on the scope. Okay, I'm using an isolation transformer so that I can connect my scope to the supply of this bulb, keep the actual mains isolated. And yeah, look at that steep, you know, instead of a 60 hertz smooth sine wave, we're getting that steep rise there. And I bet that's what creates those harmonics that interfere with the radio. Now keep in mind that this transformer has resistance in this coil. It's like 18 ohms, so that peak would be much higher. So if I calculate the value, you know, what that peaks up to of this current, yeah, it's, it's not going to be nearly what it is if this bulb is connected directly to the mains. Because like I said, 18 ohms in the mains probably has milli ohms of resistance or impedance. So yeah, let me calculate that real quick. So we're 50 millivolts per division, and it jumps up, and just beyond two. We'll just say 100 millivolts, and you divide that by the one ohm resistor I'm using to measure the current. So that's uh, 100 milliamp pulse. Well, that doesn't seem like a lot, but as I say, the resistance of this is limiting that. That pulse can go much higher on the mains. And that's a very sharp edge, and that's going to interfere with the AM band. See, see that? that pulse is pretty steep there. So now let me put the 47 ohm resistor in series and see how that drops that down. Well, that test failed because I think the resistance of the coil here. So I'm living dangerously. I'm directly connected to the line making sure my scope ground is on the neutral side of the line. It's probably ground loops and things but don't try that at home. But yeah it's uh, not much higher but we're getting this weird look at this, this massive ring here interesting let me put a normal bulb in okay just an ordinary incandescent and you get a sine wave somewhat distorted because of the waveform the supply is not perfect but yeah there's no uh, oscillation there might be a little fuzz at the top a little, a little at the bottom maybe but perhaps the ring is caused by inductance in the line reacting with the that sudden rise in the capacitance in the circuit well again my theory anyway and that's putting that noise all over the AM band okay so now I added 47 ohm resistor in series with the bulb and well, it shrunk it down quite a bit but that big ring effect is gone or at least quite a bit reduced so maybe I wasn't quite right on my theory maybe it was more than just that 
fast rising edge. Maybe it was that large ringing there that was causing the interference in the AM band. So what they should have done is used a fusible resistor here instead of just a fuse. Or they could have moved this resistor over here in front of this capacitor. Or, you know, somewhere in the line here. You might be thinking, oh, you have to have that there or that'll damage the LEDs. No, this surge, this is more of a surge resistor. These are what limit the current. But if you plug this thing in on the positive or negative peak, at the highest peak, then you get a very large surge. So you want to have this resistor to protect the LEDs. And it protects them here. I mean, the capacitor absorbs some of, some of it. But if this was here, it would limit the current so you wouldn't get that oscillation. But, yep, just an example of a bad design which causes interference. And, it, you know, if it was designed right, it wouldn't need any extra parts. I mean, you could eliminate this resistor altogether if you used a 47-ohm fusible here. But they didn't do that. Well, I'm done with this. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.